So arm coming up, rounding to the other side and open up. Last one. And tuning with your breath so that this becomes the beginning of our vinyasa. Now reach the arms up as you inhale and as you exhale, fold forward into an uttanasana. And let's flow up and down a few rounds. Inhale, reach up, palms to sky. And exhale with a flat bow, flow forwards and fold. One more, inhale, come up, palms together. And exhale, folding in. Now from here, bend the knees round your back. So we're going to roll up and down the spine a few times. Rolling up one vertebra at a time. Once you get to the top, you just unravel. And then to come down again, we tuck the chin in. Start rolling the spine all the way down into an Uttanasana, super relaxed. So again, noticing the difference between going up and down with a flat back and going up and down with a rounded back. Gentle bend into the knees as we roll up. And it can be super slow, breathing into every single stretch that you feel in your back. Chin in as you roll down one vertebra at a time. The arms are so relaxed like a rag doll. Hold in completely. Last time. Tailbone down as the knees are slightly bent, rolling up. Good, and as you come all the way up, roll the shoulders back. Let's come into very slow Surya Namaskar, um, the classical variation. So now the feet come together and come to the top of your mat. So we're just gonna warm up as we always did in India. I'm just gonna add my music. We always repeated 12 rounds of this every single morning, sometimes 24. So palms together in front of the heart. And as we inhale, we reach the arms up, open the chest, find space. We're still warming up, so take it easy. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Left leg back, knee down. Just open the chest, inhale, look forward, broaden through the collarbone. And then step the right leg back into plant pose. And exhale, knees down, the chest and the chin. Inhale into a cobra, shoulders back, super soft cobra. And exhale, press it back, downward dog. Take a full breath in here, releasing breath out. One more, inhale. Exhale. Next inhale, step the left foot through, right knee down. So softly, just checking in with your body. Inhale as you open through the chest. And exhale, step the right foot forward and folding. Inhale, come all the way up with a flat back. Open the chest as the arms reach up. And exhale, hands in Anjali Mudra, back to the heart. Let's keep going. Inhale. So it's like a breathing exercise, allowing space into your body. Exhale, come down. Right leg back, knee down. Inhale. With the space created in the hip flexor and the quadriceps. Left leg back, hold the breath in, plank. Exhale, softly, knees, chest, and chin to the ground. Inhale, cobra, shoulders back. Exhale, down dog. Step the right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, open chest. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, all the way up, reach and lengthen. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll keep going. Inhale, find the flow, the fluidity. And also the connection between the shapes. 
So we're not just moving from one shape to another, but we're transitioning left leg back, knee down, open chest, inhale. Hold the breath in as you step to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Cobra, inhale, progressively. Just feeling more comfortable in the shapes. Exhale, down dog. Left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, open chest. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, come up. Exhale, back to the heart. Again, reach. Notice how you start building heat and space in the body. Exhale, fold. So mindful, no rush. Right leg back, knee down. The breath is really what moves you. Left leg back, plank. Hold the breath in. Allow the exhale to bring you down. Knees, chest, chin. Cobra lifts you up with the inhale. And the exhale drives you back, down the dog. Right foot forward, left knee to the ground. Inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold, relax your neck and head. Inhale, all the way up, reach and lengthen. Exhale, hands to the heart. Two more rounds, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Left leg back, knee down, let's reach the arms up this time as well. It's Chandra, half moon. Exhale, hands down, right leg back, hold the breath in. Knees, chest chain as you exhale. Cobra, shoulders back, inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Left foot forward, right knee down, arms up, inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold it up. Inhale, come up, open chest. Exhale, hands to heart. Last one, breath in. Bow down. So namaskar, it's really this bowing to that particular element. Right leg back, knee down. Inhale, open the chest, arms up. Hands to the ground, exhale. Inhale, left leg back, hold the breath. Exhale, knees, chest in. Cobra, inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Right foot forward, left knee down, arms up. Inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana. All the way up, inhale, reach. Exhale, hands to heart. Just a couple of breaths. Just noticing heartbeat, noticing your whole kind of shift. Two more breaths. Okay, so from here, release the hands down. And either keep the feet together hip width, your choice. Actually, let's keep them hip width. <laughs> so feet hip width apart. Inhale in Utkatasana, bend the knees, sink the hips way into the heels, arms up. And we're gonna flow here. So chest towards the thighs, knees stay bent, arms come back. And twice more. Inhale, Utkatasana. Knees stay bent. Exhale, chest to thighs, dive and brush. One more. Inhale. Exhale, dive and brush. Good. Inhale in chair. Stay. One full breath, sinking the hips, strong glutes, strong quads. Exhale, fold forward. 
Good. Take a half lift, inhale, and then walk back simply downward facing. Just a couple of breaths, holding it down dog. Head relaxed, neck relaxed, and just allowing the legs to lengthen. Now from here, let's release the knees down. We're gonna come into a via grass in a wave. So knees will come slightly closer to one another. Extend the right leg back. And then extend the left arm forward. So hold here and breathe. Gaze down and soften your neck and your face. Just a couple more breaths, finding stability and steadiness. Hips are square and the right toes are radiating back. Release the left hand down slowly. With the inhale, we're going to open the chest, reach the right leg back and bend the knee as if you want to touch your head. Some people can do this. <laughs> I can't. Exhale, knee to nose. Round and touch. Two more times. Inhale, open. Bend the knee as if you want to touch the toes to the head. Exhale, knee to nose. Round and touch, middle to spine. One more. Inhale, open. Exhale, knee to nose. Good, extend the right leg back. Now just simply allow the toes to come down and turn the left shin like so, and the right arm up. And your right arm will come up and over, and you bring so much weight to your left hand that the right toes lift. Good. So extending through the right side. And strong right leg. It's like Adva Chandrasana, like half moon. Now from here, bring your right arm by your body, bend the right leg, and maybe cut your foot from behind. If you have the foot, gently press the foot back. Be careful of your lower back. We have warmed up, but still sometimes with the lower back, we need to be mindful. So opening in like a chapasana here. And then as you exhale, keep the bind of the foot. Just bring the heel towards your sitting bone, maybe flex your foot. This will give you a quadricep stretch. So I'm just flexing my foot and allowing my heel to come closer to my sitting bone instead of pushing it out and away. Good. Slowly release. Mindfully, we're going to come out of this. Right arm up and over. Stretch it out here. Feel space. And then right hand will come down. And just turn the left shin in again. Just a simple cut cow here. Inhale, open the chest. And exhale, press and round. Just feel the differences on your two sides. Come back to neutral spine. Extend the left leg back and away. And the right arm forward. Good. Just a couple more breaths. Look down, keep your neck long and soft. Take one more, inhale where you are, feel the core. Exhale, release the right hand down. Good, and as we inhale, we send the leg back and then bend it as if we're gonna touch our head. And then the exhale, knee to nose, navel to spine, coiling in. Twice more, and not shooting it away, just really using the muscles. Nice. Exhale, knee to nose. One more. So we're arcing the spine here like the cut and cow stretch, but we're adding the leg movement as well. So here we really round our back. Extend the left leg back. 
into neutral, radiating the toes, and then releasing it down just to shift the right shin, like so. Good. Left arm up, and then over the ear. And then so much weight until the right hand comes that naturally the left leg lifts. So it's like Ardha Tandrasana. Pull the left glute. Left arm comes parallel to the body, bend the knee and catch the foot. Press to open the chest. Side of the neck is relaxed. You can even gaze down. Breathe. Use the right side of your abdomen, not just the shoulder, to keep you into position. And then maybe flex the foot and allow the heel to come closer so that you receive a quadriceps stretch. Last breath. Good, and slowly release the foot, let it come all the way back and extend. Left arm up and over, and slow the left hand comes down, and you come back to neutral. One cut cow, inhale, chest opens. Exhale, press and round. Inhale through neutral spine. Tuck the toes, exhale back, downward dog. A few breaths, just releasing whatever we dug up as tension or as a, an intense sensation in the body. We're kind of allowing it, allowing it here to move as we breathe. Okay, let's bring the feet together. Inhale, reach the right leg up to the sky. And with the exhale, this time again, knee towards the nose as you move towards plank. Two more times, inhale slowly, don't shoot the leg up, feel the resistance. Exhale, knee to nose, like you're moving inside honey, as I always say. One more, inhale, right leg back and up. Exhale, knee to nose. Step it forward mindfully. Release the left knee down. Good. As we inhale, we're going to come up into Anjaneyasana. As we exhale, we'll circle the arms back and fold over the right leg. So we extend the right leg in Ardha Hanumanasana. And twice more. Inhale, bend. Open, circle. Exhale, fold it over. One more, inhale. And exhale, Ardha Hanuman. Couple of breaths. From here, the right foot will come down, back knee will lift. Inhale, reach your arms up. Hold crescent. Holding crescent and breathing, sending the left heel back as the back thigh bone comes up towards the sky. So we have very strong back leg and the right leg is 90 degrees. Now from here, take one more breath, slowly open the chest to the sky as if somebody is pulling you from your heart, arms or hands rather, exhale, hands come to prayer, turn to the right, and using your abdomen, hook the elbow outside the knee. So you're in a twist. Good, hold and breathe. And you could always have your left knee down if this becomes too much. Lift out of your shoulders so the neck is long the collarbones are broad good slowly release the left hand down 
We're going to transition into a side plank for a moment. So shift the right foot over the left and extend the right arm up. Hold and breathe. Left side of your abdomen is so strong and you're pushing the ground from your shoulder blade rather than your shoulder. Take one more breath in. Sweep the right arm up and over so you stretch your right side and then we're circling back down into plank. <laughs> Tatiana, are you good? <laughs> Inhale here. Exhale, slow chaturanga. Into upward dog or cobra. Inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Just sway the hips a little bit from side to side here. Just feeling your side body as the hands firmly press down. And let's bring the feet together again. Just taking it to the other side, left leg to sky, breath in. Exhale, knee to nose, round and touch. Twice more, inhale. Exhale, comes in. One more, slowly. Just feeling how this practice is affecting your body. Exhale, knee to nose. Slowly step it forward. It's like this full body massage, isn't it? Inhale, reach the arms up. Anjana Yasin. Exhale as the arms circle back. You open your chest, so much space. And then fold over the left leg. Twice more. Inhale, and it's progressive. It doesn't have to be your deepest depth from the first moment. And exhale. One more, inhale. And joining this broad, big movement with the arms. And exhale. Hold and breathe, find a little pause, feeling the breath undulating your spine. So there's no stuckness, there's always connection through the breath with every single muscle and bone. And sometimes we might feel disconnected, that's fine. We're practicing exactly for this reason to connect. To learn to feel, to become familiar. Half lift as you open the chest, the left foot comes back down. Feel how the foot touches the ground. Tuck the back toes, lift the knee, crescent. Holding. And you're also feeling those movements of prana that we talk about. So there's a strong rounded stance and there's a lift through the arms. So we lengthen through the whole body. Just a couple more breaths. As you inhale, reach up, palms together. Exhale, they come down, turn using your core, and then hook elbow to knee. Pressing palms. Collarbones broad. Nothing is squeezed too much. Soft face. Send the next breath into your spine and into your abdominal organs. And then slowly release the right hand down. Shifting to side plank, mindfully left arm to sky. Keep the breath going. Strong legs, especially the right leg, is firmly pressing down, and your whole right side is working. Now let's sweep the left arm up and over the ear, 
And this will bring us back to plank. Inhale in a strong, solid plank. Shift forward, exhale, chaturanga. Into up dog, breath in. Downward dog, breath out. And then every time we come to downward dog, we check in. We check in, we reset, we begin again. Let's come forward into plank again and back onto our knees. We're just gonna add another interval of tiger pose. So we're gonna lift the right leg again and send it back. Again, bend the knee, we'll find the rasana here. So left arm comes back and around to catch the foot. We press the foot and open the chest. Doesn't matter how far you go, and you could even be just without the bind, but using your back. And use your back muscles, so it's not just pulling onto the limbs. You're actually working on your whole back muscles, the hamstring, the glute, the muscles of the spine, around the spine rather. Take one more breath in and release it out. Circle a little bit through the hips, like steering a big pot of yumminess <laughs> of some sort and then the other way. So just releasing through the hips, or lubricating the joints. And then come back to neutral, switching sides, left leg back and up. Bend, using the back muscles, right arm forward and round, touch the foot, using the strength of your back. Press the foot to open. It doesn't matter how it looks on the outside. What matters is how it works on the inside, how we feel the front body opening and the back body strengthening. We also allow the shoulder to find this nice stretch. One more breath in. Release with the exhale. Good, extend the hands forward in the Nahata Asana for a few breaths. Chest to the ground, forehead to the ground. Just keep the breath going, feel the soft massage at the back of your heart as the breath comes in and out. And super gently press the hands down and let's make our way back to Adamuka. So feel how Adamuka is a counter asana for tiger. So the backs of the legs are lengthening. You might feel the effect. And let's bring the feet together again. Right leg rises, keep the hips level, don't open the hip. And exhale, bring the knee to the right tricep. Good, let's say right elbow even, if you're not sure what I mean by tricep. And again, right leg back up. Exhale. Knee to tricep. One more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to tricep. Now bring it to the center and step it through. One breath, one movement. Release the left knee down. Inhale, circle the arms, open the chest, so much space. And exhale, fold over the right leg. Ardha Hanuman. We inhale again, same thing. Circle the arms, open up. This time we'll lift the back knee, fold over the right leg, 
Parshvottanasana. Just a couple of breaths. Drawing the right hip crease back. Really feeling the extension in your right leg into the IT band, which is the side, let's say, of the leg. And as you bend the right knee again, we come back to crescent, but now we'll add to that. So we'll inhale here, open the chest, look up to sky, and with the exhale, we're gonna shift into Vira 3. And we're gonna repeat this just three more times. So mindfully place the left leg back down, inhale, open the chest, and exhale, slowly shift, Virabhadrasana three. Twice more. It's a lot of work for your right leg. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Super slowly. Feel the resistance. Exhale. So when we go slow, we don't need to do this a hundred times. Bring the hands down. Now, we're gonna go deeper into the fire. We inhale here, if you're right, glute isn't, burn, isn't burning already. The exhale, we just tuck the left knee behind the right, and we coil in. Twice more, inhale, extend the right leg up and back. Exhale, it's like a little curtsy squat. Knee behind me, and bend. One more, inhale. Exhale, coil in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, release the left foot down. Whew. Take a moment. In Uttanasana, folding. Relax the upper body. Relax the neck and the head. Relax the face. Bend the knees gently from here, roll up, one vertebra at a time. Back to standing. So now that we have really worked on this right glute, we're gonna stretch it out. So we're gonna bring the right knee in. First, we're gonna just extend the leg forward, toes pointed, both legs super straight. It's okay if your leg is lower down. Use the core to draw in and flex the foot. Let's come first into a tree pose. Palms may come together or they stay wider, especially if you have tightness in your neck. Hold and breathe, gaze at one point, just allow the stillness, to bring stillness in the mind as well. Just two more breaths. And if it's wobbly, no one cares really. So let's bring palms together again. We'll bring the hands down, knee to chest, and this time we'll cross the leg over in a figure four and start bending into Utkatasana with the left leg. So we give the glute a really nice stretch in standing pigeon. And again, maybe here, there's this super soft pulsation that just helps you to Get familiar with the muscles and the bones and find space. Good, nice everyone. Let's take a breath in here. Maybe you bring your hands down. Maybe you extend through the left leg and folding. If it's a little bent, it's fine. If you have done this before and you would like to go into an arm balance, 
there's an arm balance here, which is um, flying pigeon. So if you want to just try, you're going to tap your toes around your tricep. And that's stage number one. If you just feel this connection, then you have quite a good um, idea of what's gonna happen. Second stage is to have your arms more forward so the hands are not so close to the feet. They're more forward so you have space to actually shift. Yes, bravo, Peta. Right knee. So we have Peta and Tati. <laughs> okay, slowly from here, bend the left leg again or the standing leg anyway, Tatiana, your different leg. I hope that was the leg that you had before. Knee to chest, send it back. Hands to the ground, standing split. Right leg frees up to sky. I'll give you the option to either keep your hips open or square, it doesn't matter. Just make it a, a left leg lengthening rather than something about the right leg. Good, place the hands down, just step the right leg back and the left leg back, take it to downward dog, super simply. You can move through a vinyasa here, rolling into plank, exhaling into your favorite way, either chaturanga or knees, chest, into the back and feel the chest opening. And then coiling back, let's coil into child's pose. Keep the knees wide and folding. And this is, as we were discussing mudras at the beginning, so what is, this asanas or all our body mudras, so full body mudras, this is how we see them really in yoga. So what does this shape invoke? It invokes release, groundedness, letting go and surrendering, and also this bowing, receiving humble support. Just a couple more breaths, catching up with your rhythm. It's especially beneficial if the forehead touches the ground, just because it even feels that our thoughts and our excess brain activity is kind of being absorbed by the ground. Let's slowly make our way back to Adho Mukha, just to take this to the other side, and then we'll start winding it down. So make your way back to Adho Mukha. Just being so much in contact with the layers that we start peeling with every movement. So feet come together, left leg lifts up to the sky, breathe in. And exhale, left knee to left tricep. So we're working a lot on abdomen today. And again, send it slowly back and up. Exhale, knee to left tricep. One more. Inhale. Exhale, knee to tricep. Send it to the center, mindfully step it forward. Right knee releases down. Inhale, wide circle with the arms. Exhale, folding over the left leg. Just one more time. Inhale, circle. Oh, feeling the space here. Exhale, hands down, back. Knee lifts, Parsvottanasana. 
So we're just keeping it a little bit more closed hips today in terms of standing warrior asanas. And on the next breath in, we come back to crescent. We inhale to open the chest and we exhale to gather through the front body and come into bear three. Don't worry if it's wobbly. It's what makes you stronger. Three more. Inhale, open. Exhale, strong belly shift. Mindfully, right toes back down. Inhale. Exhale, shifting. And again, the slower we go, the trickiest. Last one. Exhale, come forward. Good. Nice. Hands to the ground. So from here, we just inhale in this expanded shape. We exhale, knee behind the knee like a little curtsy squat, we round. Twice more. Inhale, broaden away. Exhale, knee at the back of the knee. One more, inhale, exhale, coil. Inhale to open, exhale, release the right leg down. Folding. Actually, let's open the legs wider, even wider than the mat, as if you're coming in Prasarita Padutanasana, like a shorter variation of Prasarita and folding. breath going, allow the spine to lengthen. So I prefer that you bend your knees so that your spine is a bit more upright than straight legs but spine rounded. So then you have the opportunity to shift the sitting bones a little bit higher up. Good. On your next inhale, Broaden through the chest, half lift, bring the feet closer again. And as you bend the knees, round up. Good. Coming to tree on the other side, left knee to chest. First extend. Pull in through the core, keep the po toes pointed. And then as you bend, bring it in, opening the hip now, arms up. Good. So if it's wobbly, it's fine. It's really our body calibrating, re-remembering. As we try to find stillness with our body, then we start to become still in the mind as well. Or maybe the opposite. Maybe when we become still with the body, sometimes the brain starts to go. So it's really, it can be one day, it's like this, and another day is different. So let's bring the hands down and then cross the leg over. Bend, right leg is in Katasana. I'm just feeling standing pigeon. So we really feel now the left glute opening up. Hands are in prayer. You could place them onto the shin. I didn't give this option onto the other side, but it's not making a huge difference anyway. Maybe it's kind of adjusting a little bit. And let's place the hands down and fold over the right leg. Be mindful of your right knee. You still need to re-engage the quadricep here. 
Good. And if it's too far, this one for you, don't worry, stay in the previous one. You have the option to play around with the, with the arm balance. And again, the most important bit is the placement of the knee onto the tricep and the foot around the other tricep. So maybe if you're just working on this, it's to just have the hands down and just tap and then go back. Just tap and go back. It doesn't have to be that you go to the arm balance straight away. Good, let's come up, hands in prayer, knee to chest, now the right leg is burning. Send the left leg back. Standing split. Relax the neck. And release the hands down. Left leg back, right leg back. You're back and down the dog. Move through the answer so mindfully, so, so slowly that you're just not missing any one moment. Good. Inhale into the back bend and exhale. Let's come into child's pose. Make it a wide knee child's pose. Toes together, knees apart. And you're completely releasing to the earth. Soft breath. Softening into the inner and outer hips. Allowing the belly to soften inside the legs. And let's gently make our way into pigeon pose. So you can go through downward dog or just very simply bring one leg forward. Raja Kaputasana. Good. Let's take a breath in as we open through the chest. And as we exhale, hands down, forearms down. And breathing. Let that be precise with time. But if you need to go before uh, 10, 15, up to you. So here, especially, sometimes we might find a lot of tightness in the hip. So we really want to, with the breath, very mindfully allow it to come into where we feel these blocked areas. And allow it to wash away any tightness. Last full breath. Press the hands down gently. Lift the chest. Let's bring the left leg forward for a twist. Ardha Machandrasana. So bring it over the right knee. Lift the right arm up, lengthen up to sky. And then exhale, hug the left knee, turn towards your left. Take the twist to the other side, unless you're doing this on purpose, yeah. If it's on purpose, of course, feel free. Hey, Tatiana, you were good. I'm just doing the pregnancy variation. <laughs> good. 
good. Just a couple more breaths and focus on the twist being especially in the thoracic spine where the rib cage is rather than the cervical, which is your neck. So let's say from the lower back and up to the base of the neck is where we mainly want to feel the twist. The neck can twist, we know that, so we don't need to necessarily exaggerate that. Good, and gently come to center. Just counter twist for a second to the other side. Good, and let's take it to the other side. So left leg bends. And the right leg comes back for pigeon. Maybe you find some space with the inhale, opening the chest, and then with the exhale, you release down. And then we become silent so that we can listen to the messages that come from our body. And the way this practice is very much about repetition. And it's really interesting to see how in the long term or even day by day, even if we do the exact same things every day, there's a truck going outside my window, I can't hear it. We see how we differently, differently relate To the practice and it's fine that maybe one day we come without any motivation or desire to practice and then one day we come and we're super excited the whole idea of the sadhana which is describes this practice which is lifelong and the sadhaka being the practitioner, a lifelong practitioner, is exactly that, that we put every day a little practice in our day. And it has a huge impact in our health, mental health, but also Body health, of course, that's why most of us come into the practice. First thing, the first reason why. Let's slowly press the hands down to open the chest and bring the right leg forward. Cross it over, left arm up, breathing. Twist to the right. So pregnancy variation is you twist to the opposite side. You don't squeeze the baby, but you want to twist to the closed side. Soft jaw, soft eyes. the breath into the kidneys as well. Sending them some love to prepare for the day and for the week. They get a lot of um, the effects of stress really can deplete our kidneys. Let's come into back to center. Last sitting asana feet, legs forward, extended, and together, Paschimottanasana, fold forward. We 
breathing into the hamstrings and working with gravity and it's okay if your knees are a little bent we can have a knees bent variation where the chest comes close to the thighs And slowly come up as you inhale and let's roll onto our backs. Slowly or you can come onto forearms and all the way down. Come into a happy baby. And just one more hip opener to lengthen into the inner and outer thighs. You have the option to extend the legs if you have the space in the hamstrings. If not, then you don't need to. And let's release and make our way into Shavasana. Extending the legs forward, palms facing the sky, completely relaxed. Just noticing the effect of the practice in your body. Sometimes we wait until Shavasana to kind of feel that, oh, that was so good. I'm so glad I woke up this morning to do it. Just allow the breath to move through you. Wherever you feel that there might be some emotional, especially residue, maybe from the situation, obviously that we're all in, you can leave some shadow, shadows inside us really. Some places of contraction, or maybe it has nothing to do with the situation. Maybe there's something personal that is going on for you. A tough conversation that you had, or something that had an impact. Allow just the breath to bring more space to the area of the body that you feel this residue. Just a few 
few more moments. And super gently start adding some soft movement into the fingers and the toes or it's the breath deepens. Maybe you exhale from the mouth. For some of us, it can be tricky to just stay still and do nothing for a few minutes. So even that is really part of that practice. How can we practice to rest? Extend the arms up overhead, stretch it out. And resting, not just, you know, chilling in the sofa, watching something, but doing nothing. Let's make our way into the side body and then press to come to a seat. And let's bring the hands together in front of the chest, gently bow the head in. Just reflecting again for a second on how we feel, what is the, as we were discussing at the beginning, the bhava, the feeling, the essence of this morning. After this practice, the mood. And then the gesture of really bowing in towards ourselves. So maybe thumbs to the third eye center, thanking ourselves for practicing and for just tapping into our being. Namaste everyone, thank you so much.